So the other thing is obviously uh, connecting your wetware, your brain, to the hardware. Right? So this is where the term singularity came about, where, where Kurtz will talk about how computers are going to basically move at such a high rate and such a high speed that essentially you can simulate every single neuron in your brain and merge and live in the computer, the virtual world, and you wouldn't, wouldn't even know, um, and live forever that way. Right? So it's not as far-fetched as you think, right? Because if you think about it, right? I am wearing a Google Glass here. Right now, my, my eyes have to interpret the data. My brains have to make, no, my eyes capture the image. My brain has to interpret the information. We're talking about wiring that directly into the brain so that my avatar could be here talking to you. And if you touch me, I can actually feel it. So if you think about the implication of that in the, in the, in the near future, you can't tell what is, what is actually virtual and what is real. Um, and the implication is huge, right? You don't need to send a man to Mars. You send sensors to Mars because you'll be able to feel everything that um, the robots or the sensors. You know, this is the cost of sequencing your genes, okay? It's fallen from $100, uh, $100 million more than 10 years ago to $1,000 today, okay? Why is this important? Because, I don't know whether you guys know, when, when, when you look at the pharmaceutical industry, have you ever wondered why they always call it drug discovery and not drug development? Because they have no whiskey tango uh, box. Uh, you know, idea of what is actually happening with regards to uh, with regards to the uh, 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 your body and how it reacts and so forth. You know, they, they, they basically, for example, I think uh, there are two thousand kind of uh, lung cancer, but we only have fifty type of drugs to treat all cancer. Right? Um, we don't really know what is the real reason behind it. So this sequencing of genes allow you to understand why exactly your body is reacting the way it is. Another example is when you and I are prescribed medication, you and I take drugs that are tested mainly on the Western civilization, a population, the small population, and then everybody get the same dosage. So you and I may have actually this different genetic material that will react adversely to the dosage that we're given. But everybody take the same dosage. And that's why you've got problems like, um, you know, some of the drugs like Avadia and uh, some of the other medication, um, you know, the, uh, what's the name, the NSAID drug that uh, caused heart attack. I mean, you know, essentially you have a gene, if you take that, you may have a heart issue. But most people actually, it works fine, you know, they don't actually have any problems with it. Another field is epigenetics, okay? So, so that's pharmacogenomics, prescribing medication to you according to your genetic makeup. Then epigenetics is how the environment impacts the genes. How does a cancer cell turn on? So you, we're beginning to understand this, and we're beginning to be able to address this. So if you go to my blog, um, I think a year and a half ago, I actually, um, posted a blog from New York Times where a doctor who had leukemia was a top researcher in leukemia himself. Can you imagine? If you had a world expert in a disease that you actually had, and it was in stage four, and they gave him three months to live, um, and he was sequencing genes to find out whether any of the genes would turn on on the cancer patient with leukemia. But because he was dying, his mates sequenced his genes first, and they found that there was one gene that um, was turned on in his um, cancer cell, and they had a drug turn it off. They tried it, and he went to remission and it was cured. It's amazing. I mean, you know, some of the things that are happening. Another one, I think, that uh, was earlier this year, last year, uh, there's a boy who, uh, who was dying of uh, pancreatic cancer, which is a very fast-reacting cancer. And essentially, he, uh, you know, they had no choice. The parents signed a consent form. Doctors modified a HIV virus to target cancer cells and injected the boy with it. He got very sick and thought he was going to die, but next morning he was up and running and the cancer cell was all gone. That was a very risky uh, treatment, but this is a technology that's coming very, very quickly. Okay, so the other area that I'm really passionate about and you guys should really know about is digital biology or synthesis biology. Um, essentially, have you heard of 23 and Me? This is a company, unfortunately, uh, you can't do this test with this data anymore. Uh, the FDA just banned it. Uh, but all the Singularity guys uh, were given the opportunity to do it, so I did it. And it cost like, it was free for us, but it's like $99. They sequence a very small portion of the gene, but very, very specific ones. So it tells you things like, you know, I have a higher risk of things like age-related macular degeneration of the eye. So I know that I should get my eyes checked up more regularly if I have the gene that, you know, that have that issue. Um, you know, it tells you things like, you know, you know how most patients when they drink alcohol, they turn red? Well, I don't. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually part university, part think tank, and part um, uh, accelerator. So any companies that get speed up on singularity, the university takes 2%. Right? Um, it's extensive. I mean, it's the problem that we have in Australia 
where the universities want to own the majority of the IP, which then become a disincentive to academics to go into commercialization of technology. Better just publish paper and get a cushy job and not get sacked. So, um, so that's, that's but in the U.S., right? I mean, Stanford owns two percent of Google, right? Two percent of Google is a lot of money, <coughs> and now they set up a Stanford venture fund, which actually invests in companies. So programming your genes is similar to computer programming, except that instead of zero and ones, you have base four ATCG. So it follows the same rules, and if you actually program it to do certain things, you will do the same thing over and over again. Um, so I'll just show you an example. If I want to make a cat glow in the dark, right? How would I go about doing it? So the first thing you got to do is go to a company that computes genomics, and for less than two thousand dollars in two days or three days, let's say I take a hair of my cat on a saliva swap or something, send it to this company. Within three days, they're sending a data, uh, you know, either I, the data either on a chip or on a hard drive, upload it, go to DNA 2.0, download the software called uh, Gene Designer 2.0 Screen, and then I don't have to go to that gene, right? but they already sequenced the gene for the glow dark gene of the jellyfish. You can get that from open source DNA. Download that, play around, program it, you know, and so forth, slice it. When you're happy with it, send it back to uh, DNA 2.0, and again for about three to five grand in two or three days, and the price is coming down rapidly. Um, they will send you back the genetic material of the DNA you just produced. Um, and then, Tresco, you have a glow dark cat. <laughs> yeah, but then you know you guys are really fussy. You don't like ringing. You know. And then my classmates at Singularity last year had the fastest kick started, one of the fastest kick started started project, a glow in the dark plant. For forty dollars, they will give you a, a seed of the plant. Um, so I actually got into the TEDxKL. I was invited by I was a master, and so he flew down and gave a talk. Um, and he basically talks about how they impregnate a bacteria with the glow in the dark gene of the jellyfish, and then have the bacteria um, infect the plant. And essentially, then that's how it happens. So I gave a talk at Ur to Urban uh, last year, and they were telling me like how their you know solar prices are driving down the energy price, and they have all this cost issue, and they're going to be and I said, mate, this is the this is the least of your problems. If my friend is successful with this, think about it, right? The plants are going to be glowing in the dark, <laughs> right? So the, the solar solar panels are going to be working day and night. And all it needs is just water and uh, fertilizer, and that's it, you know. 